So I'm speaking at a school CF next week, uh, very last minute, uh, filling in for someone. Uh, but what I'm going to do is talk about fears uh, and uh, specifically the fear of public speaking, talking in front of other people like what I'm doing here on the phone. And it's kind of ironic, I think. Again, I'm speaking to students uh, because young people these days, they want to be uh, you know, influencers. They want to make videos and stuff. They want to be famous, but it's scary. <laughs> scary being on the internet. And it's very, very scary if you're you know, appearing a video and speaking in front of other people. So I'm hoping that this is a fear that they can connect with and um, of course, you know, you want to deal with deeper fears like, you know, dying and stuff. But I think an immediate fear that people can relate with is just, you know, dealing with what other people think. And that's a social media thing that's a very relevant thing today. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a passage uh, from Mark chapter 5, um, continuing on what I looked at with them the last time. So I looked at them with the first half of chapter 5, with a demon-possessed man. <laughs> that was very interesting. Um, and now continuing on, we look at some fears um, to do with death, actually, to do with suffering, but also having to do with uh, the perception of people around them. So um, I'm going to pray and give you some uh, first impressions as I work through this passage together with you. Um, let me pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to speak into real fears that these youths face today. I uh, don't want to belittle them, but I do want to point them towards um, faith, faith in Jesus that can free us, but can also uh, help us to um, really see how good it is to look towards you and not just ourselves in these fears. So I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, all right, I'm not going to read through the whole thing. Uh, it's kind of long. Uh, just give you a summary of the kind of like points that I have in my head. So I'm going to talk about the fear, uh, how fear is good, that's one thing, uh, how fear is bad, but also how fear can point us to faith. So good, bad, and faith. Those are my three points. And I was thinking of opening with um, how I once met uh, Yobian, you know, Yobian YB, Yobian is this really amazing uh, lady in Malaysian politics who's also a Christian. Uh, but I met her uh, many years ago as a student. And so I want to say, you know, like you guys, you know, you're students now, you're very quiet. And she was really quiet then. But one day, I saw her in the newspaper speaking in front of 10,000 people. And this was at a political rally. And so how do you get from that timidness, that quietness, to now this boldness and this kind of uh, courageousness in front of so many people. Um, I think one of the answers we find it here, you know, that there are deeper levels to our fears. It's not just that we're afraid of people, but there's something inside of us that makes us afraid of people, of death, of the future sometimes. So um, again, uh, good, bad, and um, faith. So firstly, the good, uh, we see a man who's afraid of losing his daughter. So verse 23, this man pleads with Jesus, my daughter is dying, put your hands on her so that she may live. So what we see here is a man who is, um, uh, there's a big crowd gathering around Jesus, but he steps out of the crowd and he comes before Jesus because he's afraid on behalf of someone else. He's not dying, but the thought of losing his daughter you know, um, that's a real fear that he has. It means that he loves her. And so my point is just that sometimes fears uh, can be good. You know, to feel fear is to feel at times concern, to feel love. You know, fear sometimes help us to be aware of dangers around us. And actually, the only people who don't fear, feel fear are psychopaths. <laughs> we call them people who are, you know, slightly deranged because they are unable to feel not just for themselves, but feel empathy for the people around them. So actually fear is just part of those complex emotions that we have that allow us to connect with the people around us. So the first point that we see here is that actually fear um, sometimes is an expression of love, like this man who wants Jesus to heal his daughter because he's fearful of losing her life. So that's number one, fear can be good. 
Uh, but secondly, fear can be also be bad. You know, fear can keep us from doing the right thing. Fear can maybe even make us feel like stuck. And this is this woman in verse uh, 26. It says she suffered a great deal. She spent all her money, and yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And so here is a very poor thing. Uh, this woman, 12 years already. Imagine 12 years. You see all the doctors who cannot cure your sickness. And so you, Bopiena, you spend all your money already. You're not getting better, you're getting worse. And at the end of the day, you know what? You lose hope. And what happens to this woman is that she kind of like wants Jesus to heal her, but she's scared. She's scared. And so she thinks, verse 28, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. And amazingly, she gets healed. She sneaks up before, behind Jesus. She touches clothes, ding, and suddenly she gets better already. And so the story could have ended there. You know, she's going to run away, get healed already. But actually what Jesus does is um, he confronts her. He says, come forward. You know, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Actually, he doesn't say come forward. He says, who is this person who touched me? And in the end, she overcomes her fear and she comes down, bows before Jesus. And what Jesus says is, daughter, your faith has healed you. Your faith has. Another word for it is saved you. And so Jesus is implying that, yes, you're healed, but now that you've come forward, you've been healed of something even greater. You've been saved of a greater suffering because you've trusted in me. So uh, fear can be good because it helps us to uh, love and be concerned about, other th about important things, but fear can also be bad because sometimes the reason why we don't come forward to Jesus, because we feel paise, the reason why we don't come forward to God, or sometimes we don't even come forward to other people is because we want to deal with it on our own. We think no one can help us because we've tried so many times before. But with Jesus, what he's saying is it's worth it. Overcoming that fear and trusting in Him. So don't let fear keep you from coming before God, in other words. So good, bad, but finally this thing called faith. So what's faith? And, and um, this is again back to that father who is fearful of his daughter. And so verse 35, Jesus was still speaking and some people said to the father, your daughter is dead. You know, sage already. And they even say, hey, don't bother Jesus anymore. And this is like the worst case scenario. You know, you want Jesus to help, but then it's too late. And what Jesus says to this man is, don't be afraid, just believe. And just think about that for a moment. Jesus says, don't let this fear overcome you. But Jesus doesn't say, therefore be strong. No, Jesus says, trust me. And the idea of faith or trust, it means that you know, you're admitting, I can't deal with this. I'm fearful of this, but you can. And so Jesus is saying, trust me. Don't trust yourself, but put your faith in me. And what Jesus does in the end is a little bit of a long story. He follows the man back home and everyone is like in funeral mode. Everyone is crying, he's wailing. You know, they're mourning the daughter, which means that actually she really is dead already lah. But then Jesus says, hey, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. And the moment they hear that, they start laughing at him. <laughs> they start thinking, oh, it's so ridiculous, this Jesus. Who does he think he is? Meaning, actually, they don't trust Jesus. They don't really think that Jesus can fix this situation. Because die already. Lah. It's too late already, too serious. Heal maybe, but raise from the dead? No way. And so what Jesus does is he raises the girl from the dead. And he takes her by the hand and he says, Talita kum, which means little girl, get up. Or xiao mei mei, hei san la. As if like waking someone up from uh, in the morning, like you wake up your daughter in the morning, hey, time to go to school already. And so he just kind of wakes up this little girl. And it's very, very sweet because this girl wakes up and Jesus says, hey, give her something to eat, <laughs> like breakfast. Really as if, you know, all Jesus did was just wake up this person from having slept too long. And that says a lot of things because it means that on the one hand, it's not a big deal for Jesus to do this kind of thing. But on the other hand, you know, what if this father had listened to his friends? What if this father had just kind of like not bothered Jesus? Oh, I don't want to touch out him. You know, 
his daughter would have stayed dead. You know, Jesus would not have followed him back home. But because he trusted Jesus, and because he, despite his fears, I mean, he must have been still feeling sad and all these emotions still all the way, but despite all that, he still trusted Jesus. His daughter is alive, and, you know, he has, you know, he has her back. And so, yeah, yeah, that's the end. A really, really good ending. But what do we learn from this? You know, fear can be good, can be bad, but can lead us to faith. Well, firstly, fears tell us something. I think fears tell us what we truly love, tell us what's really important in our lives. So in a strange way, you know, what are you fearful of losing in your life? You know, it might be your job, <laughs> might be all your money, might even be maybe losing the love of your girlfriend, your boyfriend, that kind of thing. Well, in a way, it shows you that those things are important in your life. But then again, it also points you to maybe placing too much importance in those things as well. Which brings us to the second thing, fear can be bad. Sometimes when you're too scared of losing something, it keeps you from doing the important thing, the good thing. You know, it's possible to be too scared about something. And sometimes that too scared can be offending people, can be too scared about what people think of us, and it can even keep us from coming before God. I tell you the truth, a lot of times people don't come before God, not because they don't know God, not because uh, they can't, you know, uh, go to a Christian and ask questions about God, but because they just paise. It's crazy, you know, it's crazy to think about this, but Chinese people especially, we are very, very paise to ask for help, even from God. And so don't let paisiness keep us from approaching God, especially, especially if you're desperate, especially, especially if you need help. But finally, finally, the solution to our fears is not being strong, but actually faith. That is, we are trusting God in the midst of our fears. And so that means actually the situation you're in that you're fearful of, you might still be in it. It doesn't mean that things will get better before you come before God. But while you're still fearful, while you're still doubting, that is the time. That's the time to trust God and to say to God, God, I know that you can overcome even this thing that I'm afraid of. And so I'm coming to you even right now to save me, to come to me, and to help me in this situation of fear. Uh, so yeah, already just this, uh, <laughs> too long already, just this overview. Uh, but I need to shorten this, I need to tighten this a bit to bring it down to something that will make sense to these kids and to help them in the situation that they're in. Do pray for me, do uh, leave me any comments if you think that would be helpful for me for this talk. And uh, yeah, good to end with a prayer as well. So let me pray. Uh, Lord, pray for anyone who's watching this who's also fearful uh, in the right way. Um, in a situation that they're in, they're feeling stuck. They feel that no one can help them. Help them to see that you are the person to bring their fears to. Help them to know as well that you're saying to them, don't fear, but trust in you. Don't fear, but have faith in you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.